a big, big, big hangover. That's what I call it. <laughs> Do you have, uh, because you guys, corn, you guys are pretty, pretty big with the uh, computer users. Yeah. I mean, you're, you have, uh, they're wired. I, I don't want to tell the story again, but I'll, I'll, I'll just say it real quick. They have a real strong fan base, a real dedicated, and I, I don't want to even call it uh, underground so much because uh, everyone knows the band now. But they have, a, I mean, I did this thing in, in Minneapolis. Iggy Pop was on the bill. Everclear was on the bill. No Doubt was on the bill. A bunch of other good bands were on the bill. And Korn was on the bill. And everybody was screaming for Korn, who didn't come on stage until the later afternoon, I guess. But they started, yeah. they were screaming for Korn at uh, 10 in the morning all the way through the show and this is in minneapolis it's not like you guys are you know you we hail even, from minneapolis no or anything we weren't even playing till the next week either <laughs> <laughs> and that's of course when i gave my famous corn yell from on stage and they were still yeah, doing drugs it. in the trailer when they heard that yeah. all right so the name of the new cd oh. is life is peachy it's out if you haven't already got it, go get it. Yeah. Let me give the phone number, uh, 1-800-LOVE-191, fax number 310-854-4455. I'm Adam Carolla. That is a good doctor. Dr. Drew is a board-certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. And tonight is the uh, debut of uh, Love Line on MTV, Drew. Amazing. After uh, all these months and years, even, yeah. it has finally come to fruition. Yeah, and it's already finished in New York, on the East Coast, I guess. Right. So the, uh, the hate mail's already pouring in on the East right. Coast, but uh, out here, I guess it airs at uh, midnight. Guest is Nat so. Natasha Henstrich. And, uh, you she were, is you were... such a piece of ass. <laughs> And you were very funny. You were really. He was. He was so flustered by this woman. It, it was just. She, she's I've never a, seen him like that. She's a chick from uh, Species, and she did this uh, thing with uh, Jean Claude Van Damme, I think, where he plays like his brother, his uncle, his dad, and his grandmother in it, and they all know karate real well or something. But she's just an incredible looking woman and it's hard to carry on as usual when you're sitting uh, within arm's reach of uh, uh yourself when you're sitting by her. like that yes yeah. all right all right but we, we didn't come on the air to talk about uh love line and natasha we came to talk about corn are you guys just fit it, finished a video last night yeah yeah we haven't even slept and we're here we're oh, troopers total dedication that's what i love about the band you you guys uh, were filming out in uh in la yep downtown uh we did the first night out there, then we went to the Veterans Hospital. The morgue. Uh, the morgue. We were doing this crazy video of us being dead, so... And you had the, uh, you are telling me about ten minutes ago that you had the uh, white uh, contact lenses in, so you look like... Hey, but Drew, when people die, their eyes don't turn white that way, do they? No. No, it's not. They, don't, they didn't That's look this guy right white. here. They just look clouded over. No, oh, yeah, they do, you, do get it, you do get kind cloudy. of a funny cl gray that's cloud across the cornea, yeah. All yeah, right. That's what that looks like. So, and, you, and they don't move. That's are you guys both morticians here? <laughs> No, I no. uh, actually, yeah, Jonathan worked for the Kern right. County that's Morgue, right? right? Ooh, sicko. We heard about that last night. Yeah, right. it was fun. So I got to do a lot of stuff in the video. Like you had to, show him how, had to show him how, what how he did. What does all the hospitals like? Does look right? How did you get the veterans to cooperate with something like that? I don't know. They just said show up there. We were wow. in like the old part of it where like World War One, it was a cafeteria or something. <laughs> that's what they told me. Asbestos. It was asbestos everywhere. Oh, it was nice. crazy. Very nice. So you guys Stop smoking now. That's why we're yeah. green right now. You guys are going out with uh, Metallica coming yeah. up? When's that tour start? 17th. Yeah. We're doing it. Oh, right. so it starts in a week? The 18th yeah. will be at the L.A. Forum and the 19th, two days. Oh, that's bitching. And then uh, how long's the tour? Are you, are you going throughout the country with them? Uh, we're just doing West Coast with them right now. I think we're doing... Wait a minute. I just heard 20... I just heard 20 and 21. Is that at the Forum, Peter? Yes, all uh, right. Uh -oh. <laughs> Again, the uh -oh. management knows more. Uh -oh. And that's why they call management. <laughs> uh, we don't know nothing. 2021 at the uh, Great Western Forum. Yeah, that's what I okay. mean. Yeah, I can see a bunch of corn fans showing up for, like, Snoopy <laughs> on ice on the 17th. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, let's rape Snoopy. All right. All right, you guys going to help us out with some of these calls? Of course. We'll do a little more uh, corn-related activities to show where's on. Sarah, 18, you're on Love Line with Corn. Hi. Hey. Um... I was just calling. I'm pregnant, and I'm giving my baby up for adoption. Mm -hmm. And <coughs> I'm not having, like, second doubts. I'm not feeling bad about it. But, you know, they keep telling me, you know, I'm going to go through this grieving process and stuff. And 
Well, the grieving usually is more for women who have actually abort, and that, that's the point I've made over and over, is that that's sort of overlooked in our culture, that, that people think that abortion somehow... Well, wait a minute. There's got to be more grieving when you no, actually... No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone, Drew, good. Punch the mic or smack it one more time so you don't have to do it in the 11 o'clock hour. Uh, but it is that... It's that 14 I, years on the radio, he still punches the mic every five minutes. I, I'm not saying that she's not going to have some difficulty with this. I'm just saying that our culture overlooks it for the abortions, and I tend to emphasize that. Now, certainly, it's going to be—it's very difficult to give up a child after you've been that connected biologically, and there's a lot of sort of biological, emotional connection that comes with it. But Sarah, family, culture, everybody needs to support people like Sarah to make sure that she understands she's doing the right thing by the child. Definitely. And that if you really feel within yourself that this is what's good for that child, for that person that you're giving birth to, that tends to diminish some of these feelings of loss that you have. And a lot of the adoption services now have situations that keep you in contact with the adopted parents, sort of an open adoption. Can you write, you know, uh, I am involved with the Catholic Big Brother program, and uh, my young ward, uh, Nate, who I've had for about four years, when he turned 16, he got a letter that uh, was given to his uh, adopted parents that uh, said, you know, don't give it to him until he's 16, I think it was. And we read it, and it was from his mom and it was his original biological mom and it was penned you know there in the hospital room kind of thing wow. and it was totally surreal reading something that hadn't been open in 16 years saying you know by the time you read this you'll be a teenager blah 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 mm. so uh, I don't know if that if you can do that Sarah or if that stuff goes on or not well how I'm doing it is I mean it's totally open good I good mean, you should you should be proud of yourself you should well, you know, it's just, I know my situation. I know I can't. I mean, and I've met a couple. I've chosen a, a couple. Good. That's fantastic. And they're so, you know, I cry about but I mean, I'm excited. And I'm, I mean, Fabulous. I Fabulous. And Adam, just for, so you can get hmm. behind Sarah, too. This is a child that's going to be raised properly, and you will not have to support Theoretically, so unless, get behind the, Sarah, unless the people turn out to be horrible uh, pedophiles but, but or something, like you never it. know. That no, could happen. That could happen. No, 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 no. Now, look, <laughs> you, you know, you, you I, I occasionally will give sort of, you know, uh, if I give a clinical impression that is the uh, less than optimistic, you get on my case. And here you're planting a, a ridiculous seed in Sarah's mind. At, at uh, well, a what seed? Recoculus. Thank you, Drew. You know the rules here on Love Line. And uh, I'm just putting it out there as a little scare oh, to other please. women who are planning on having unprotected sex and giving the kids up for abortion. Oh, relax. Relax. Eight minutes in the show, you're busting a nut. You're embarrassing me in front of my corn friends here. Sorry. I'm sorry you had to see that outburst, guys. Forgive it's all me. good. <laughs> Jessica, 17, you're on Love Line with corn. Hi. Um, I have a concern more than a question. Um, my boyfriend's been in jail for three months, and I was worried about maybe getting, like, an STD or something from him. Wait, Ann was talking in my ear. <laughs> what was going on? Your your boyfriend's boy in jail. How many? Three months? Yeah. When's he coming out? He gets out next month. Is he in, he's in prison? No, he's just in, he's not, he's not in prison. He's just, like, in jail. <laughs> he's in jail, which is, I, I understand, not quite as bad. Either way, he's uh, cramping in the same room he's sleeping in. Pretty much. All right. Yep. You know, you know it's not good when you're cramping and you're cramping like a foot and a half away from your cot. That's always a bad. But no matter where you are, by the way, mm -hmm. he's, he's not picking up the soap, is he? I don't know. I don't talk to him very often. I hope not. His voice would be different, you'd know. How much of <laughs> how much of a boy? Uh, what a show! Hey, how, how much of a boyfriend was he before he was put in jail? Well, he spent a lot of time with me before. How long were you boyfriend and girlfriend? Well, we just had our fourth month anniversary, like, last Thursday. Okay, and that's two months into his jail term? Pretty much. Okay. Yeah, well, wait, so they what? were two months. I couldn't, why couldn't they just answer that? I, I don't months. know, Drew. They're not all as smart as you. Two months. Jessica. Yes. Uh, what, what's this guy in for? He broke his probation. <laughs> all right, hold on. We have to make fun of Jessica for a second here. And we put Jessica on hold so we can yell about her. Every time, and we have a lot of incarcerated people listening to this show. Uh, God bless them. They send us this great art. You know, some, something, that, something happens. Whenever you go into prison, you learn how to draw nude women in, like, the first <laughs> week. Like Van Gogh. I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing how, how incredible. I mean, I've never seen the, the vagina drawn with uh, such expressionism before. But something happens. And this is nothing. This is on a piece of toilet paper with a piece of charcoal. It's amazing for what we get from our incarcerated friends, and uh, nothing against them. But the, 
the deal is, is whenever we ask somebody, what is he in for? Because we get a lot of women saying, my boyfriend's in, or a lot of guys calling and saying, my girlfriend's in. And we say, what are they in? And they always go, they 